So now that Stephen is talking to the council, how does it go for him? That's what we're going to find out today in Acts 7. Well, when we left Stephen, he is talking to the council, and they're making up accusations that have a hint of truth in them, but not really true. Acts 7 starts out with the high priest saying, are these things so? Which I sort of imagine is uh, kind of a formal way of saying, is that right? You know, in a really snotty way. I, I, I don't know that for sure, but that's kind of how I heard that. And Stephen goes on, brothers and fathers, you know, men who are equal to me and men who are higher than me, the glory of God appeared to our father Abraham. And what I found cool about this is we find out Abraham wasn't left in the dark. He was told what was going to happen. He had a vision of what his people would do and what would happen to them and how they would come to the land and eventually be saved by the Messiah. And then Joseph is sold, becomes the right hand of the Pharaoh, and God protects the people of Israel through this act by bringing them to Egypt so that they can eat during a time of famine. But then eventually the people become slaves in Egypt. God sends Moses and Moses is rejected. God is rejected, but eventually brings them out. And through many trials and tribulations that go on where God fulfills his promise, protects his people, the people reject him to the point of building a golden calf, but still delivers them. And all these things happened, making them a people through peril and people disappointing God but God always comes through for them. But summarizing this entire history of the Jewish people, this land, this nation that was given to them by God, and even reminding the temple structure that Moses said that a person would be raised up from their own people to be their Messiah, and that this promise was existence from the very time of Moses. And we remember that the Sanhedrin, made up mostly of Sadducees, only believed in the first five books of the Torah. They didn't believe in the prophets. So Stephen is telling them something they would have recognized, that even the Messiah was prophesied in the Torah. Eventually, they ended up going into sacrifice because they turned their hearts to idols. And throughout this entire time, prophets are sent to inform the people about what's going to happen. And the people couldn't stand to hear it. So they killed the prophets too. Stephen is going through this whole thing that the, the temple structure would have known, but he's trying to tie this together. Again, these men were Jewish and they knew Jesus as a continuation of this story. God saying this, make everything and says, you stiff necked people, uncircumcised in the heart and the ear, you're always resisting the Holy Spirit. So you might be circumcised in some places, but you're not circumcised in your heart and in your ears. Remember that? Jesus kept saying that if you can have ears hear, if you have a mind, understand. And all the things that your fathers did, all these times they turned away from God, all the times they turned away from the prophets, they murdered all the prophets that were sent to them. And now, see again, whirlwind history, the righteous one, Jesus, you betrayed murdered. And even though you received the law delivered by the angels, you didn't keep it. Wow. When you think of like Moses and Abraham and Jacob and Isaac, you you think of the victories of these people who were flawed human beings, finally reconciling themselves to God, finally bringing themselves. And instead he's saying, you know what? It's not true. You turned against Moses. You turned against God. You turned against the prophets. You God has been with you every step of the way, and every step of the way you turned away from him. You were sent into exile because of this turning. All these situations, all the way to Zechariah, he killed the people telling you what God wanted. And now, he killed Jesus too. He killed this holy one. And you're not even following the law. You think you're following the law, and you're not even doing it. You're the leaders of all this, and you're not doing the right thing. And it says, they gnashed their teeth. They were furious. They blew into a rage and they just let them keep going. And that's what's amazing about this. And so then they were just, they're so angry, their bodies just exuding anger. And it said that Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit. He says he looked up 
and he saw the glory of God and Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. And when he saw this, you know, it was a vision. You know, I have to think like a reward for a man who just knocked it out of the park. He got to see this vision that was prophesied in Daniel that Jesus kept saying, I'm going to be at the right hand of God the Father. And you know what? God gave him that vision. They covered their ears. They couldn't even hear it anymore. And they were yelling at the top of their voices and they all rushed at him and they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And it says, then the witnesses laid the cl their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. There's our Paul. There's our young acolyte. What looks like he's the guy who's taking responsibility. He was the leader of this group that hauled him out and stoned Stephen. And this was a mob. Again, they weren't supposed to kill people. Like I said, a lot of times people got stoned in that time. Oh, no. Did he die? Oh, we were just stoning him. We didn't mean to kill him. So they kind of used it as sort of a loophole in this particular case. And so Stephen becomes the first disciple to die in the name of Jesus. And Jesus said this was going to happen. And the man doing it was Saul or someday Paul right there. So while they were stoning him, Stephen crawled out. He said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, it says, he cried out in a, lo a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against him. And then it says he fell asleep. Stephen stood up for the church and tried to tell them, look, you went the wrong way. This is going the wrong way. And you gone the wrong way in the past. Your ancestors have gone the wrong way. But Jesus and God has been steadfast to you, has stood by you. God had been faithful to them, and they couldn't handle it. Anyway, but I'm going to meditate on this week. It's like, what am I not going to meditate about on this? Is the fact of this whole summary of the Old Testament. Every major thing that happened and how every step of the way God was faithful to his people, gave them land, gave them rescuers, provided them in times of need. And yet every time when they were told the truth about what was going on, they didn't listen. They had uncircumcised hearts, meaning that they were listening to the flesh instead of listening to what God was saying to them and then striking down their prophets all the way until the very end when they struck down Jesus too. What a, what a summary of the entire history of the Old Testament. What I'm going to pray about is that I have that heart of Stephen where I can summarize things. I can tell people the thing that they need to hear, not just what they want to hear. And I can say it in such an elegant way. Can you imagine taking the entire Old Testament, which is really huge, and summarizing it? all like this, I mean, stunning. I think we can all pray to have a heart like Stephen. What I'm going to share with others, again, is that fact that Jesus was not something that was plucked out of the middle and created as this entity. This was the plan from the very beginning, and Jesus was right there, breathing life in the very beginning of all of us and this entire beautiful earth. And this whole history was leading up to this point where Jesus would come and save us all from our sins. It was a plan in motion, very elegantly summarized by Stephen. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember, you can look at my other podcasts. You can find them all at abetterlifeinsmallsteps.com. I also have Small Steps with God, which usually I talk about a religious topic or a book to sort of make your Christian life, your walk, in your Christian life. I call it from paradise to paradise, right? From even to heaven. How can we do better on our path as we walk this earth? Then I also have Buzz Blossom and Squeak, which is looking at just what an amazing creation we have and the stunningness of the world around us in nature. Don't worship nature, but I look at it as a testament to the amazing thing God created. Have a wonderful weekend. And remember to be a little bit more like Stephen. Thank you.